Okay, where's our notes here? Yeah. Are you ready? Yep. Did you put lipstick on? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Welcome to the How to Beach channel. We have a very special guest today. We have Mrs. How to Beach here with us. And today we're gonna to talk about uh, what it's been like living here in the Virgin Islands for the past three years. We've just gone past our three year anniversary and we're gonna cover 10 or 11 things about uh, what we liked, what we didn't like, some of the most frequent questions I get asked about living here. Um, so we're gonna get into it right now. Yep. Okay, the first topic that we'll cover, which is one we get asked about a lot, is do you get island fever living on the island and do you get used to the island time of the flow of how things happen here? So what, what are your thoughts on either island time or do you feel like you've had island fever from living on an island? I don't think island fever is something that occurred to me. Um, and I'm always uh, late to everything. So island time is kind of... <laughs> it works for you. It works for me. I think it was easy to adapt to island time. Okay. And you haven't been anywhere except for Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands in three years since uh -huh. you've been here, right? Have we gone to yeah, Spain? In the summer. In the yeah. summer. But so we haven't traveled very much, obviously with COVID and whatnot. So but you especially, I've been back and forth to Florida. So um I don't I wouldn't say really that I got island fever either. Um I lived in Montana in a remote mountainy type place for a long time. So I'm good in remote locations. So I didn't really get island fever living here. Um, and I have traveled a fair amount, even with COVID, because I've been taking care of our houses in Florida. We've been back and forth to Puerto Rico a lot. So I feel like I've traveled more in the last three years than I have in a long time. So I don't feel island fever. I also think that um, St. Thomas and St. John are very close to each other, that if you feel that you need to go somewhere and you are um, eager to leave your house and go somewhere, you can always go to St. John or vice versa. If you live in St. John, you can go to St. Thomas. Maybe St. Croix, if you live in St. Croix, it's a bit farther away and it's more difficult to hop into another island and make you feel that you're going somewhere. But Puerto Rico is easy to get back also, and forth yeah, to also. also. So that's why we ended up buying a house over there. So we go over there a lot. Let's go ahead and take number 11 on our list and roll it in here also. I think it fits with this topic, uh, which is entertainment on the island. Um, I know you have some thoughts on this topic. What, what, as far as being entertained and things to do since you've been on this island for yeah. three years now, how, what are your feelings on that? I think, um, Maybe some of this is COVID related because we have spent like two and a half years of those three years um, with COVID. But I do feel that there is a lack of entertainment for me. With happy movie theater, you can go to the movies, but um, there hasn't like there hasn't been concerts. There hasn't no. been events. They had some things like a, a chicken wing competition and Once a, a, year. a chili cook off, and they haven't had those things. They're starting to come back a little bit now. But even when they had those things, I think the concerts and events were sort of far a few between yeah. where we lived in Florida, Panama City Beach, when we used to live there, the city did a great job doing events and concerts and outdoor things and free things and free concerts every Thursday and stuff like that that they just don't do here. So there's not a lot of those things to do. It's a lot of going to the beach or going out on a boat and we don't own our own boat. So if we charter a boat or we go with other friends and charter a boat, it's an expensive activity. It's a lot of fun. It's great. But, uh, <laughs> it's but it, it gets expensive. I also think that they could do more um, sport-related activities. I think they used to do like 5Ks and 10Ks, things like that, that are not just water sports, but I think they don't do them anymore, so. Yeah, she did the eight tough mile and you did a 5K, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, let's go to number two, which is adapting to island life. Do you feel like you like adapted to the lifestyle and the culture and you assimilated in with the people and you would, no, but what, what are your thoughts on that? I don't think it's difficult. To, I, I don't think it's difficult to assimilate to the Virgin Islands. It's especially if you come from the United States. Um, there's no language barrier. I think there is a little bit of cultural differences, but it's not a major cultural difference. I think as if you were moving to another country. Um, and the truth is, you hang out. You tend. I think we, especially she worked at a at a at a school with other co-workers and things that she hung out with so for me it, it's it's a harder place to make friends here people come yeah. and people go like my first friend i made here after a couple of months he was gone and her first friend after, that she met here after the her first end of her school year she couldn't take the island life anymore and she was gone so that is true i think there's a lot of i think this is the place where a lot of people come and stay a couple of years and they leave and a lot of people who have been here for longer they know that 
So I think I think making good connections and friends might be a bit difficult because those who are here for a long time tend to think that they're you're going to leave. Yeah, they're sort of standoffish because they think you might only be here. You yeah. might wash out after six months or a year. So it's hard to make friends with people who have been here for a while. And then when you do make friends with people who've been here for a while, then maybe they leave. So yeah. friends have been a little bit of a challenge here for sure. I also think it depends a little bit on your profession. Like I'm surrounded by people. My I, I work in a school, so it's easier for Jeff who works from home. And if you come here to work remotely in your house on your computer, that might be a little bit tougher to, to adapt to the life yeah. here. Okay, let's do number three, which is the weather. Okay. My favorite. <laughs> yeah, I have, I'll start on this one. I have found uh, that I do not miss winter. I do not miss seasons. I do not miss yeah. cloudy days. I mean, it's always, almost all, except for this last week, it's been rainy and windy. Um, but I don't miss, I don't miss seasons, any of it. I could have 85 degrees and sunny all year long, and that's perfectly fine with me. Me the, too. The hardest part about it is sometimes you just need a couch and a Netflix day and you look out the window and it's beautiful <laughs> and the palm trees are swaying and the beach is right out there and you just feel guilty almost to just have that Netflix and couch day, but you got to have them. So there's no, there's not like, there's not many days where you get to do that. Yeah. I also think the weather makes a little bit easier, uh, the clothing situation. So you just need flip flops and dresses and shorts and short sleeves t-shirts and I don't know that's yeah. that's if you're, an easy decision every day yeah if you're thinking about moving here uh, I I worked as a realtor while I was here and I thought I might need some nice clothes I didn't I've never worn them um, <laughs> this white linen shirt which is a little big is about the nicest thing that I ever take out of my closet oh thank you now halfway through the video <laughs> yeah, halfway uh, I'm like, what are you gonna do so if you're thinking about moving here and you're watching this video to see what to expect like bring less clothes and things than you think you're going to need to bring. And go yeah. back and watch our other video about moving here, which the video quality might not be as good, but the information is good. I'll link to it up here and at the end of the video also. All right, we're on number four, cost of living. Okay. Do you want to do this? You do more of the budgets than I do, or do you want me to do it? I can, I can summarize this very I'll, quickly. I'll drink beer while she does <laughs> it. It's expensive. It's very expensive. I get a lot of questions. If I have X number of dollars, can I move there? And can I move there with this salary? If you don't think you can afford it, it's it's not going to be fun. You have to be able to afford to pay more for housing, to have something. Their housing is going to, especially if you're on a low budget, you're going to have to expect to have something crappier than in the States. And it's going to cost more. And then everything else also costs more. And this reminds me a little bit to when we talk about entertainment. Um, if you're going to go on a boat, it's expensive. If you're going to go diving, it's expensive. What do we usually pay when we go out on the boat with seven or eight friends? Like 150 a person, 250 yeah, a person? Yeah, 150 a person minimum. Plus tip. Plus tip, yeah. So, and that is for, so for a couple, that is that's, for a local. That's a local discount for a guy that owns a boat that we've been out on a bunch of times. So that's 300 bucks for us to go out on a boat for the day. So plus tip. But also, um, groceries are about like 20, 25% higher. Yeah. And going out to eat too, like there is not many other things to do. So one of the things that you might want to do is go to Red Cook or go downtown and go and have a cocktail or go and have dinner. And those are, I think, more expensive than at least where we used to live. And I'll throw in something here that I don't think is included in my notes. Uh, we have some friends, or she has some friends who are leaving the island or who have left the island recently after being here for five, six, seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that they're realizing is that they weren't able to save any money. They feel like they're at the same place or worse off than they were after five years of living here. So depending that's depending on what kind of job you're gonna get to come here with, uh, you're not gonna like be putting money away for that retirement account unless you have some sort of high income job and you already know you can, you can save extra money where you are now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think we're on five. I might have screwed up some of these numbers, so I might skip a number or go back a number. But anyway, <laughs> the next one we're gonna cover, which I already covered a little bit in the last little segment was housing. So do you wanna say anything about housing? Um, I think it's difficult to find housing here. At least it was difficult when we moved here, but I think it's more difficult now as yeah, in not, many other places. It's not getting any easier. Yeah, uh, both to rent and to buy. Um, for me, a big thing is the, um, I don't know if to call it quality of housing, which have sounds like, I, I don't know, too snobby maybe, but um, what you can afford for what you pay, 
uh, here versus where you could, where we moved here from in Florida, it's different and it's a big difference for me. I could pay the same and we're living in a condo with no yard, for example, that is very important for me. And in Florida, I could have uh, probably a bedroom, if a condo or a house with one extra bedroom, at least three bedrooms instead of two. On the beach. And a yard, for example, which here I cannot. For what we're paying. Yeah, so that is a big difference for me. Yeah, we've never lived in a condo before, so we have discovered we're not condo people. Our condo that we're living in doesn't have a balcony or any outdoor space, so you're either inside or you're outside. Um, and this is, we've always owned our own houses, so we don't own the house, so we can't paint the walls, we can't decorate it, we can't do what we want. And we're we learned that we are not good renters. <laughs> we're great renters. Okay, we don't like to Our landlord renters. loves us because we pay rent in the That's first of the meant. month and we don't mess anything up and I fix stuff when it breaks. We don't like it. But we don't like it. <laughs> yeah. I want to have my own stuff and my own things. And it's something that we learned coming here. So, um, you know, if you want to buy a condo here, just here's a couple little realtor things for you quick. Most of the condos here, you can't finance them, so you have to pay cash. There are some that you can, but if it's going to be at a resort or on the beach like ours is, you probably can't finance it. And then um, to buy a condo here, a little one bedroom condo will run you upwards of $300,000. Then after you pay cash for it, then you still have to pay your HOA fees, which are about eleven, twelve hundred dollars a month, and plus your real estate taxes. And they just told me in the office the HOA fees are about to go up here again. Uh, and our power bill was about four hundred dollars for the first month that we lived here because the power is ridiculous expensive here. Yeah, the so, power is very, very expensive. And if we wanted to buy a house, a single family house, for what we could compare to the house that we had in Florida, um, we would have had to spend around eight hundred thousand dollars. And yeah. that's just, we just didn't want to spend that much when we moved here. Um, so those are things to consider if you're thinking about moving here. Yeah, I think um, I have never lived in a place like, I don't know, in a big city in the United States. But I would say that maybe prices are similar to what you can get over there. Because a I've one looked, bedroom, one bathroom condo is expensive. If you want to live by yourself, Yeah. Uh, if you're single, you want to live by yourself and you don't want to share. I've looked at those comparisons and they've put this pretty close to like New York City, like the cost of living is pretty similar. So that's, if you know what that's like, that's a comparison for you. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, number six, six. groceries. Uh, we'll just do this quickly. I already said that our, I think groceries run about 20 to 25% mm -hmm. higher than what we used to pay in Florida. Um, like we went for six months where we couldn't get nacho chips. When you find a nacho chip brand, like the nacho chip <laughs> brand that I finally found that I loved after it disappeared and it came back and then I was so happy and then it disappeared never to return again. You also need to know that uh, probably you shouldn't go to the grocery store on a Saturday or a Sunday, even if it's the, your free day when you normally do your groceries because the rest of the week you're working well, because the ships come on Tuesday. So maybe the best, the best day to go to the grocery store is on a Wednesday, for example. You're going to have the fresher, yeah, the fresher produce. Yeah, fruits and vegetables and that sort of thing. And we go to one store to buy kind of our bulk items. We go to another store to buy more like grocery store items. And then we go to a third store to buy fruits and vegetables. So it's more difficult. It's like you have to just, we've kind of gotten used to it. We don't really yeah. mind anymore. It's just like you don't usually do all three stores in one day. We'll do grocery shopping on we'll do vegetable shopping on one day and do the other shopping on other days. So it's just it's just sort of island stuff. It just takes a little more effort like everything else does. But the island is not that big, so it doesn't take like 20 minutes to go to the grocery store. It's not, I don't want anybody to think that you have to drive like two hours to go to the vegetable store and yeah. another two hours to the other grocery store. So. And then the other thing I wanted to touch on with this category is just like when you first moved here, there's a lot of things you can't get. Like I miss licorice, for instance. And so I used to, whenever <laughs> someone would go back, I used to have them bring me licorice, which you just, now I just learned to live without all those things that I couldn't get. And um, we're gonna get into, well, this can just segue us into number seven, which is more about just shopping in general and learning how to use Amazon and what was the one? Vit Vitamix, Vitacart, Vita? <laughs> Vitacost. Vitacost, we never used it. But Vitamix is the machine that you use to make the smoothies. Well, we never used it, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how it works. But supposedly they ship here for free, but. No. Go ahead. Vitamix, Vitamix I'm gonna say wrong not all the time. <laughs> See? Um, what's the name now? Vitacost. Okay. Vitacost um, ships for $10, whatever you want. So you order one item, it's $10. But if you order 100 items, it's also $10. So, and a lot of people share. 
And then with the Amazon, if you, you can do subscribe and save and you get free mm -hmm. shipping. When we first moved here three years ago, you could sort of argue with Amazon and get free shipping on other things. But they, it doesn't work anymore. So now you don't get, it doesn't matter if you're Amazon Prime, there's no free shipping. And it took us a long time and we fought against it and our brains fought against it. And now I just order whatever I want and I pay the shipping fee and you just have to, like when we first moved here, we were like, oh my gosh, coffee costs $9. And we were like, I guess maybe one day we'll just decide we're not going to splurge. And we just know that coffee costs $9. It's not a splurge. It's just how much it costs. And I felt like we were sort of priced out of the cheese market for a while. We, we just learned that, that it costs what it costs and you buy it. And it's kind of the same thing. If you want something on Amazon, you just pay the $10 of shipping and you get it if you want it. And it just everything costs more. I also think that this te teaches you that you can live with way less. And there are many things probably in the States that you buy just because they are right there. Not because maybe you love them or not because you need them but because they're right there, because we have learned to live without um, breakfast muffins or breakfast donuts, and it's it's great. Yeah, I used to be very bad about, we had a Walmart right next to our house, and I'd go there and I'd go to the, the day-old like muffins and mm -hmm. bread, and I'd come home every day with blueberry muffins, and oh, I missed them for a long time, but I am a little bit skinnier now since we've been here. And you don't find those things here, so. You sort of, when I, she hasn't been back to the States yet, but when I go back now, you kind of, see the consumerism and mm -hmm. the things in the stores and the TJ Maxx and all the things and you just sort of think like, oh, I, like it, it, it looks different now after you learn how to live without those things. I remember the first time we went to Puerto Rico and there was a TJ Maxx or whatever it was. Uh, is that yeah. what it is? Whatever. And I was like, oh my gosh, and I was so excited to go shop at a TJ Maxx and buy a bunch of crap I didn't need. And after being here for a year, I actually walked in there and I walked down and I didn't buy anything. And she was so shocked. She's like, well, you didn't buy anything? And I was like, I don't need anything. I'm, I, that's just, I've never walked into a store and just thought I never need anything. I'll at least end up with something off the clear track. So that's a good lesson that we've definitely learned here in the past three years. Yeah, um, a little bit related to this, um, clothing, because we're talking about groceries and you're talking about shopping things in Amazon or Vitacos, which is more related to food too. But there are not very many clothing stores, for example. There are very many jewelry stores, but no clothing stores that are not targeted to tourists. Yeah. So you're gonna find like dress guards and shorts and things related to go to like a surf, clothing. Like a surf shop or yeah. a tourist shop is where you're gonna do find clothes to wear. Clothes, otherwise you're gonna have to, other than that, you're gonna have to like order them on Amazon or whenever you travel somewhere, buy them. Or if you find something different than that, it's gonna be very, very, very expensive. Um, so I think we just have learned that we don't need the consumerism that we used to have uh in the united states so this is great yeah that's great that's one of the best things we've learned from living here which will take us into our final number 10 i don't know if we're actually on 10 but that's i'm going to make this our final one before this video drags on too long which is our overall happiness meter um after being here for three years how are you feeling on the happy meter scale like are you here like uh, no a little bit more here yeah i am very happy in the virgin islands i think it's a very happy place I think that it's a good balance between between work and and fun. Um, my main drawback is how expensive it is. To be honest with everybody, it's it's the main drawback of this place. It's when I see where my money goes, but it's a great place. And on the happy meter, you were very happy with your job and very, your work environment, yeah. and it was the best job like teaching environment that you've had. And then for me, yeah. my work happiness was way down here it's a pain in the butt here the people that i worked with, it just it wasn't good i didn't enjoy it um so it's been a struggle for me it, it took me a long time to sort of break into the market and like it's sort of the old guard of people here that were very protective of the real estate market so trying to come here and be a new realtor was a very difficult thing it took me two years before i got any traction in it so that has been down on my happy meter um, but working from home has been nice and having an open schedule and doing lots of sailing and going to the beach and playing tennis and all these other things has been very good for me. So on my overall happy meter, uh, I would say I'm, I'm also happy here. I like it here. I've adapted here. I think it takes yeah. you, it's like, there's a, I forget the name. There's a curve like this, like the honeymoon phase. And then the, what the hell did I do phase? <laughs> and then you figure it out phase. You kind of come out over here. So after about six months, we were kind of like, what the hell did we do? And then you figure it out and you learn the yeah. ways of the island. And so from year one, two, and after the first year, like was part of the roller coaster, but year two and three, I think we 
dialed yeah. it in and we figured it out and we've been happy here. Um, but she did not renew her work contract. So she's going to be a retired person. Yeah. This video is sponsored also by my other YouTube channel called The Retirementality. <laughs> uh, it's our new sponsor. So you can go over there if you want to learn about investing in real estate and how to retire early. Go Great over channel. there to that channel. Uh, but we're going to we're going to be deciding whether we're going to stay here or not now that we've been here for three years and she's going to be retiring. So that decision is going to be in the next probably 30 days and we'll, we'll mm -hmm. update you on that. But that's it, I guess. Let's let's wrap it up. You think you want to tell them anything else? No, I think we covered it all. It's a great place to be and, and I don't know. OK, well, if you watch this video, like I said, because you're thinking about moving here, go watch. I have I have a video about how to move here and then I have a one year update. And I don't know if I did a two year update, but I have some other you can see kind of our progression of how we felt about living here over the years. You can I'll put them all into a playlist and I'll link it uh, in the in the bottom down there. And other than that, give us a big thumbs up if you like this video, if you found any value in it. And please subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. And if you do that, then we'll see you in the next video. This is Hot to Beach. <laughs>